to the big time. Today, we have a history maker, an entrepreneur, a publisher, an author, an actress, and an all-around diva. It is on August 18th in Washington, D.C. It is Jamie Foster Brown Day. But today, on the April Jones Show, it is Jamie Foster Brown Day. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say an all-around clown. How are you doing, girl? How you doing? <laughs> Not an all around girl. I love you. I adore you. I think you're more alive than anyone. She's so pretty. She's just a gorgeous child. You are so sweet to me. Tell me about your family. Look how you Mom and Dad. <laughs> Mom and Dad. Tell me about them. I'll tell you about mine they if you tell me about your cows, yours. right? <laughs> yes. Okay. And I grew up on a farm. What kind of farm was it? Chicken, geese, geese goats, goats, cows, they grow? horses, oh, corn, the, potatoes, oh, my greens. God. Um, just about everything. Did you do anything on the farm or what? Oh my God, I had to slop the pigs, go to the chicken coop and get eggs. And I was born in 75, so this ain't back <laughs> in the day. We had to go down to the spring and get water. Oh. And if my grandmother thought that... I'm excited. Um, this see, sounds great. You didn't know that, right? I and, like that. She thought that we brought too much dirt up in the water. She sent us right back down there yeah, the spring and get some clean water. But well, where's the farm now? In Martinsville, Virginia. It's still. still there? Yeah, but ain't nothing on it. It's one dog. It's one dog? Because <laughs> <laughs> my uncles ain't messing with all that. We still oh, got but you still got the, well, it's good you still have the land. Uh, yeah, that'll never great. leave my family. Yeah, yeah. You know, that land came into my family, the first generation that was freed from slaves. And I, you know what, that's so important because there's so many of us that we let our land go, and that's something we never get more of. You can't make more land. You can't. You know, unless a couple more volcanoes or something. But, yeah, but let's it takes us years. <laughs> it's going to take us centuries to make that. 2,000 years let's later. Let's not give up our land, black no. folks. We know. do that so quickly. Yeah, I won't, I won't do that. No, keep mm -hmm. your land. Tell me the future for Jamie Foster Brown. I, I hope I'm uh, somewhere in Europe. I want to be traveling from Europe and go see God's kids. I want to see his kids in Tibet and oh my in China and just all over the world in Russia. I want to see what his children are like because these are baby's kids today. You do understand <laughs> that. I have to talk to God every day about that. What the heck? Are you going to help me with these nutty kids you got down here shooting each other? And I don't Showing get up. it. You know, that's one of my questions later on, but since you brought it up, I understand that you are very passionate about gangster rap and the message that rap is sending to our youth today? Oh, well, I was, it's too late now. I mean, I started, you know, like 20 years ago with, with us, you know, garbage in, garbage out. You That's know, right. you know, I said, you, I, I used to fight a, uh, the industry about it all the time, and the industry was the only one that actually supported me outside my uh, newsletter. And they would tell me, you better stop being a goody two-shoes, you know, if you want these ads. So it was the kind of little threats were coming. But oh we goodness. survived that. And um, and I told them, I said, you know, eventually my son was shot and four times, and one bullet is still in, in him, and one bullet went in his heart. He's a miracle child that he's still living. And so the industry was very hurt about that. It was ama amazing that he uh, survived that. And I was trying to tell them that, you know, no man is an island. We don't live here by myself. And I said, but they would tell me, you know, you take care of your kids and it'd be all right, be fine. I said, you don't have kids. See, a lot of them didn't have children at that time. Yeah. And they were talking about, this is just real. I said, this is just bull. <laughs> 10 days later, my son was shot. Mm -hmm. But he's alive today. <laughs> with me and I'm thankful for that but now I'm gonna give you something extra something that will give you that extra glow you know how when you were pregnant or when you just lost 15 pounds or whatever made you feel just absolutely radiant on the inside everyone would say oh you have that glow 
The way that you can fake it is bronzer and blush. Either or or both, it's up to you. It depends on how much you want to do. Both products are going to start around $2 at the very bottom end and go to be as expensive as $12 to $50. I don't recommend, there's no bronzer in the world that's worth 50 bucks. Most of them, even the department stores, you can get a bronzer between 12 and 15 bucks. And so there's no reason to spend a lot of money on it, but it's the best thing that you can do for yourself to give you that extra something, that oomph, that radiant being that you are. You know what I'm talking about, ladies. When you feel like you're walking to walk and talking to talk, and when you give them that smile, it's like ding. Bronzer does that for you. You want to take some time to pick out the bronzer that's right or the blush that's right for you. The way that you can figure out what blush is right for you is pinch your cheeks, whatever color comes to your cheeks, that's the color blush that you want to get. If you're dark and you pinch your cheeks and you don't get a redness, then you want to find that something that gives you that sparkle, that makes you feel special and unique. And most of the time, just a bronzer alone can do that for you. I'm so happy that you're watching the show today and I'm so glad to give you all this wonderful advice because guess what? You're already beautiful. Stay tuned for more tips. Ten days later, my son was shot, mm. but he's alive today. And it's he's probably good. gorgeous, isn't he? He's very gorgeous. I believe that. Because I saw your husband <laughs> earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ain't say nothing. <laughs> ain't that the cutest thing, he girl? He's cutest he want to be. Girl, when I saw him, honey, I was on my way to see my fiance. He had just left his Shut girlfriend. It was in college, Roosevelt University. Early morning class. He had just dropped his girlfriend off at work and came by there to have breakfast. And I was leaving an early morning class, going through the cafeteria on my way to see my fiance. And I saw that thing sitting there, girl. I sat right down. <laughs> and you know what? He didn't tell me until three years later. He said, I saw you coming in that yeah. cafeteria through the corner of my eye. And I thought, where have you been? Mm. I said, well, Nick, well, you didn't say nothing to me. <laughs> I'm the one that sat down and, I'm the one and that let you know. And talked to him. I said, what the heck? <laughs> if I had not stopped you, so I would have stopped you. But I understand you, you're probably very serious about your fine husband as well. Well, you know, when I, when he, how did we, did I, did I ask him? I asked him to marry me, but he was over, you know, That's very it was during a stress, it was during a very stressful time, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was down in Birmingham, this nigga was teaching at Biles College in Birmingham, and I was a Chicago little cutie, yes. with straight hair and stuff, no, I, yeah, I didn't have ponytails. That's why he liked them ponytails, the pigtails. You know, <laughs> men like that young looking stuff. You know, they so sick. They are sick. I had old moccasins in the mush. What was you doing, the Indian look? Yeah. <laughs> See, when I learned that I'm part Indian, I you was like, oh, my God, rock well, let, me, let me rock that. Mm. You know, I rock whatever. I, I get up my, my, I look at my body like a canvas, and I like, so if I feel you. like if I want to paint it this way today, that's okay. Last night I was very elegant because I was hosting something for Haiti. But let's get back to the story. Yeah.